Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV, my name is Alex, I'm standing outside Selhurst Park after a 3-1 win against Crystal Palace and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to jump on a fan cam, um, obviously I've interviewed everyone, um, everyone's gone, uh, it's just me out here, but I want to soak it up, I want to soak up, um, not the atmosphere, there's no atmosphere out here, but just the result and I want to clarify that I will pin down what I've said many times. This proves to me, some people have said it papers over the cracks. Uh, Pochettino, it is not a Pochettino problem. I've said this and I'm going to say it again. I feel like now is a good time to clarify again. I believe that Pochettino has what it takes to lead this Chelsea team forward. People say that I don't have any standards because of that. But the reality is, Chelsea are not the same team as they were under Abramovich. We were already slipping under Abramovich in terms of Premier League competitions. We have slowly become a cup team, right? So, what happens? Potter comes in last season, we get knocked out of the first round of the FA Cup, first round of the Carabao Cup. Poor league table position. Now this season is exactly the same thing with Pochettino in terms of league position, but we are progressing in the Cups. And ask me, we're playing better football than last season because we have players who want to be here, who actually want to play for Chelsea, whereas last season we had players who didn't want to be here. So ultimately I'm looking at it from the stage of progression. Last season we were worse than we are this season we've made a step up you don't want to believe it but it's true and I know I'm right it's a fact all right we have a better manager we have a better team morale you could argue we have worse players in terms of quality from what we had last season but would you rather have better players who don't want to be here or worse players who can hopefully grow into that Chelsea mold because they have the hunger and they've signed the long deals committed their futures to Chelsea now ultimately you could say the only reason they've committed their futures to this club is because they want a payday but they've still done it, right? I mean, they could have signed a four-year deal or a five-year deal. Half these players signed seven-year deals, eight-year deals. Enzo signed a nine-year deal. Um, so there is commitment there. Now, I will be the first to say that I believe there are problems at Chelsea. And I, and I think it comes right from the top. I think that the way this club has been run, too many things have changed in a short period. And that's why we've had this absolute capitulation in some of these matches. Some of the football I've seen over the past few years, the worst one I've ever seen. I remember Wolves away on Christmas Day. I was standing interviewing fans wearing a Christmas hat, a Santa hat. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? This is what I do on this is what I want to do on Christmas Eve. You know, and, and, and we've had those moments. <laughs> <coughs> and last season I went to Madrid I don't want to spend all that money to watch that crap but why do we do it because we want to ultimately and there is a belief that we can get better last season that definitely wasn't the case but this season I see it and I see better more progressive football people were saying it was a really terrible performance I disagree with that I don't think it was that bad I really don't I think we controlled the majority of the game I think we were always open for a good counter-attack from Palace but when you play open expansive football isn't that just how it works you are gonna get caught on the counter because you put players forward and you have space so yeah, I don't see it as uh, as disastrous as some people do. You know, at half time I had people having a go at me because we were one nil down. I'm not going to say what, what I was called, but you know, fans thinking I'm the problem because I stand out here and interview fans after the game to to see what they think. Um, but I don't think it's that bad, and I will say it again: I do not believe Pochettino is the problem. Um, I think that he hit all the nails on the head after Aston Villa. You know, this is a this is a team that needs time. We're not just looking at age either. We've got to look at circumstances. Let's look at let's look at the players. I mean, circumstances: Petrovic, first year at Chelsea; Gusto, first year at Chelsea; um, De Sassi just come in; Silva, almost 40 years old; Ben Chilwell, come back from. Serious injuries. Fernandez not been here two years. Uh, Caicedo, we signed him in the summer. Jackson, the same thing. Sterling's just crap. I'll say that. He's just rubbish. And then Kunku's just been signed in as well as Palmer. So you tell me how you expect all of these players, and Madueke as well, not even been here two years. You can tell me how you expect all these players to just gel straight away. It doesn't make any sense. So the reality is you have to look at it and say, 
we are going to have a few shockers. It's just how it works, right? And I believe this is the case with, with a lot of processes. I remember when we lost 6-0 against Man City under with Mauricio Sarri. I wasn't sorry out. But we were completely changing everything about Chelsea at that time. We were going for a team who consistently played counter-attacking park-the-bus football. Still managed to grind up results, but that's what we did. And then we tried to be a progressive team out from the back, signing players like Jorginho, Kepa, completely changing the identity of the club. So for fans to not like that was fair, but it was a transition nonetheless. And that's exactly what we're doing now. We're making a transition. We're going from old experienced heads to youth all around the club, including the board. Let's be honest, Paul with Stanley, Lawrence Stewart, all these guys. I mean, they're not exactly experienced. We haven't poached Man United's board. We've taken Brighton's board and you expect things to brighten up straight away. It's not. It's not going to be like that. So, you know, we've got to hope that this gamble pays off. We've got to hope that Egg Barley and Bowley got it right. I don't think they did um, originally, if you're looking at the short term process of it. But from a long term standpoint, I'm looking at this team and I am seeing future positives. So. Hopefully I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we'll see how it is. I've got someone waiting for me. What, what's your name? Oscar. Oscar. What um what did you think of the game today? I presume you watched the game? Yeah. Yeah? So uh, the first half Palace did good and the second half they kind of went down. But for Chelsea's side, I think we came back in the uh, near the end, like the 60th minute, I'd say. I, and I don't really know what happened uh, then because I don't know. that We just started playing a lot better in the second half. Yeah, I mean, um, are, are, you a, are you a fan of Pochettino? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yes, but no. <laughs> I mean, he can yeah. get us the results, but he can't get. A, but he won't. He, but he can't get us results against big teams. Big teams, yeah. exactly. That's what we want—a big team winner. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we get one. It was nice meeting you, Oscar. You have a good one. All right, but um, yeah. It's good to see. Good to see that Chelsea fans are still um, travelling to the games. Um, I don't believe that you should lose hope. I know that some people, like Lewis and other people, I'm not I'm not calling you out, but uh, some people have stopped coming to games. I don't believe that's the solution. I don't believe that solves any problems. I think that makes things worse. So ultimately, if you want your club to do well, you need to support it. Now, if we see a deep underlying issue. Fair enough. But I don't see it yet. You know, we, we've had moments like Middlesbrough, Man United away, Everton away, and we thought, bloody hell, this is crap. But I've seen good moments as well. I've seen us bounce back. I saw us beat Tottenham. Doesn't matter how many men they had. I saw us win 6 1 against Middlesbrough to, you know, bounce back from the horrific away leg. And I've seen a lovely game today against Crystal Palace. And people say, give me results. You've had two on the bounce. Hopefully we can get a third with Man City. Fingers crossed. Listen, guys, I don't expect you to be Pochettino's biggest fan. I am not Pochettino's biggest fan. All I'm saying is don't sack him. That's all I'm saying. Give the man some time. This is not the Roman Abramovich era. These managers need more time. Arteta did it with Arsenal. Klopp did it with Liverpool. Circumstances different, I know. But right now, this Chelsea side is one of the hardest teams to manage in world football because of the expectations from the fans. Expect greatness, but support as well. You know, don't be toxic when we lose every week. Otherwise, I can understand why the players' confidence knocked. I actually think that sets them back. All right. Now, I'm not excusing Sterling. I still think he's crap. All right. Sterling is shite. Okay. So I will call out players. But Sterling's the most experienced one. He's on 325 grand a week of course I'm going to call him out I think he's rubbish I think we should sell him there you go there's some negativity from me um, but the rest of the squad the majority of the squad I believe that there is something there obviously there's players that might not be good enough we're going to find that out with time and the same with the manager providing he is given the time so let me know what you think in the comments guys if you agree or disagree with anything I'm saying um, but yeah hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your week and uh, all the best